formal the borders to our editor-in-chief, Derek Mead, here, and with our Canadian editor, Kate Lunau. Hey. So right now, you might be wondering where we are. Um, we are two kilometers underground and another two kilometers down a mine shaft um, going to a uh, one of the deepest physics labs, the deepest labs in the entire world, right? So where are we? Yeah, we're going to Snow Lab, which is actually one of the deepest clean labs in the world. So even though right now we're in an extremely dirty environment, it's an active copper and nickel mine, when we get inside, there is zero dirt, zero anything, because there are extremely sensitive particle physics experiments looking for dark matter, neutrinos, all kinds of the little building blocks that make up the universe. So it's very hot and sticky down here. Yes. I'm very hot right now. So it soon we'll be in the lab. Yeah, so Kate is uh, um, shooting a documentary that you'll be seeing soon. Um, but we also have a new VR camera that we want to test out. So we're just going to bring a little field trip today. Um, and behind the scenes, you've probably already seen that everyone is around you at all times. Um, but hopefully you'll have fun, and I hope you enjoy it, because no one actually ever really gets to come down here. So it's a fun treat for everybody. Yeah, cool. public never gets to see this yeah. place. So please join us, and we'll see what's inside. And go get cleaned up. Okay, so at this point, you've got to be wondering, how is this where some of the most advanced particle physics research in the world takes place? I mean, looking at this serene and snowy landscape, it's hard to imagine scientists working two kilometers below this very spot. The particle physics work at Snow Lab focuses on extremely rare interactions that can't be detected above ground, including neutrino research that won the Nobel Prize in 2015, and also helped explain how the sun works. So, Kate and I obviously are wearing a different outfit now. Uh, we just had to completely shower and scrub all the dirt off and put on complete clean clothes because this is a clean room. It's absolutely clean, so our clothing yeah. is lint-free. Not everything we're wearing is completely spotless because no dirt is allowed in this lab. It would ruin the experiments. So, and also, because we're in a uh, high-tech physics lab, as well as inside of an active mine, that means we can have no cell phones and no wireless mics, which is also why we have Nathan over here who's been hanging out with us and will be here with us for the rest of the day. Yeah, because uh, any cell phone signals could actually set off detonations in the mine, which is kind of terrifying. Yeah, so we're trying to stay in one piece here today. It's um, serious. But so, Kate, you've been here before, and you were so excited to take us here. And then we just walked in this room, and behind us are these enormous tanks. So this is a science experiment. This is science being done right here, right? Yeah, and it's like one of the coolest kinds of science, because what they're looking for is a particle that humankind understands exists because of the movement of stars and galaxies, but we've never managed to detect it before, and that's dark matter. Um, it's kind of beautiful. It makes up a quarter or so of the matter in our universe, and we have no idea yeah. what it is. So that's really amazing, and there's dark matter searches all over the world, but the one here at Snow Lab uh, is one of the leading experiments in the world for dark matter. So this is Deep 3600 and Mini Clean. Uh, they're both using liquid argon as the detection element. It's very cold inside. Yeah, so there's 3,600 kilograms of liquid argon right in there, which I'm really hoping that doesn't pop. Oh my god, it would be a disaster. Yeah. Aside from experiments that have helped explain how the universe works, the craziest thing about Snow Lab is that every single piece of equipment has to be hauled down the mine shaft, either inside or hanging below the cage we took to the bottom. That even includes all of the equipment for the Pico Dark Matter Detection Experiment, which Snow Lab's Ken Clark will show us now. So here we are. This is a dark matter search deep underground. Tell us what you're doing down here. So this is the Pico experiment. What we're doing is we're looking for dark matter, which is going to interact inside our detector. Yeah. The heart of our detector being this, this setup right here. So inside this setup, we have our active fluid, uh, which we keep at a superheated state. And so we're looking for particles to come in, interact, and then uh, we'll be able to see the interaction as it, as it happens in there. We have cameras monitoring this at all times, That's so amazing. we can see it happen. So dark matter makes up like a quarter of our universe. No one has ever found it. That's right. Yeah, You're lots of people looking for it. it. You're going to find it down here. That's right. Hopefully somebody down here is going to find it, and I mean, hopefully us. But. Well, let's take a look around. So sure. What have we got? Like, what is all this stuff? What is this? What's in this room? So in this room, so this is obviously just a model of the detector, but yeah. the real detector is, is back here. It's yeah. the, what you can see is the giant water tank. Okay. So that's, we use that because in addition to all the rock that shields out the cosmic rays and things mm -hmm. coming in from the atmosphere, we need to shield out uh, things that happen in the walls of the, of the cavern in here, mm -hmm. of the mine itself. Cool. And so we put a water tank in there, and that protects us from a lot of things that go on outside of it. That's so cool. And so can we just quickly look, like, what's around back here? Sure, yeah. So this is a, a clean room tent that was previously being used 
by the Snow Plus experiment. They were cleaning one of their uh, tools in here. So it's all set up it's so that there's a positive pressure inside. Uh, so that what happens is any dirt or anything that's in there gets pushed out and, uh, and isn't, uh, doesn't contaminate the instruments. Can I just like peek through? Yes. Why do these experiments need to happen deep inside a mine when it'd be so much easier just to do them all above ground? Well, the surface of the Earth is constantly being bombarded by cosmic radiation, and all those stray particles confuse the detectors. Burying these experiments under two kilometers of rock shields them from cosmic rays. You can think of it as another way of keeping them clean. We're standing on top of the Snow Plus detector right now. Although you can't see it from here, it's basically a giant sphere full of liquid scintillator. And while we visited, it was in the process of being submerged in roughly 7,000 tons of ultra-pure water, which these Snow Lab engineers were monitoring. This space we're in, which is 30 meters high, is the biggest man-made cavern this deep underground anywhere in the world. Snow Plus is looking for invisible ghost particles called neutrinos. It's an upgrade from the original snow experiment, which caught neutrinos from the sun. That work won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2015. I'm, uh, Wait, so what's next. a supernova? It's yes, a right, star. yes. So, yes, so, so when stars uh, about around eight times the mass of the sun or even bigger uh, get to the end of their life, they can't support uh, the weight of the star uh, with fusion anymore since they've run out of fuel. So the star, uh, the center of the star collapses and then triggers a huge explosion. Uh, so this can, uh, the luminosity of the star after the explosion can be like as bright as an entire uh, galaxy, but the neutrino pulse is even bigger, like around 100 times as much uh, energy as the light. Uh, so this, the neutrino pulse comes out like with a few, it lasts like a few seconds, uh, but we can detect when it happens, uh, we should be able to detect that uh, in this detector here. This supernova detector is called HALO, when a star explodes, it releases a whole lot of energy and a tremendous burst of neutrinos. HALO is looking for these neutrinos, which are like little messenger particles that could tell us a whole lot about supernovas in our galaxy. The HALO scientists could be waiting for the next supernova for a while, though. The last nearby one was detected in 1987, and there are only a couple supernovas in our galaxy every century. It works really well, so that when we get a signal from a supernova, we can, we can uh, determine a lot of uh, interesting supernova mechanics. That is so crazy. And like, one thing I need to ask you is like, so supernova in our galaxy, the last one was in 87 or something, right? Yeah. So do you think that you're, there's going to be another one soon? Like soon enough that will be in your career? Oh. Good chance, yeah. They happen about three times a century. We don't we don't know precisely. There's yeah. there's, there's other estimates, but around that. Uh, so yeah, it, it could be any day, or it could be for a while yet. But uh, yeah, uh, I feel like you need a lot of patience to be on a project like this. Yeah, well, we're we're, we're setting up the we're setting up the detector to essentially run itself for the next so uh, few later. decades. So yeah, uh, hopefully someday uh, I'll just get an email that we found something. Uh, it's very cool. Yeah. Well, I think we have to hit the road now. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so Kate, we're back from whence we came. Yes. How was that? You? It was really cool. I lost my voice a little bit because yeah. probably I was, I don't know, I was so excited in there or something. But yeah, the, I'm tired. Like, the pressure's pretty strong down here. How do yeah. you feel? I feel tired. That was a lot of walking. It's very much like a labyrinth in there. It's so crazy. Yeah. All these little caves and tunnels just all open up. Yeah. And at the end, every one of them is insane science. Nathan Geofun? All right, <laughs> good. All right, well, so we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna hop back up uh, to go back to the surface. It's only two kilometers up. Yeah. It's the most insane elevator I've ever seen in my life. Yes, um, we have a walk ahead of us and an elevator ride, and then we finally get to take this stuff off. All right, well, we're going that way. So later, I hope you had fun on our field trip today. Bye. Yeah? All right, we'll go